Election news now and a shakeup in the Woodbury County Auditor's Office. 28-year Democrat incumbent Pat Gill has been defeated by one of his co-workers, Republican Michelle Scaff. KTIV's Taylor Deckert spoke with the winner. All of the hyper local Woodbury County races turned red. It was a wild time here at the Woodbury County GOP watch party, but all eyes were on the biggest race overall. County Auditor, two co-workers going head to head, but current County Deputy Auditor Michelle Scaff beat out the Democrat Pat Gill, someone who has run this office for 28 years. <laughs> What Scaff has to say about that victory and what she plans to change on day one. Public transparency is important, and I'd like to start a Facebook page and some social media accounts in regards to elections so we can share information a little bit more than is currently being done. Um, just running this campaign, we use social media a lot to spread information about myself, to do some advertising. Now, current County Auditor Pat Gill will remain in office until January 2nd. That is when SCAF will take over the office. In Sioux City, Taylor Deckert, KTIV News 4. Two of Iowa's three other Republican U.S. House members, they won re-election over the challengers yesterday. Ashley Hinson in District 2 and Zach Nunn in District 3. But the race in Iowa House District 1, it is still too close to call. Incumbent Republican Mary Nett Miller-Meeks has been holding on to a razor-thin lead of one-tenth of one percent over her Democratic challenger, Christina Bohannon, who Miller-Meeks beat two years ago. With 98% of the vote in, Miller Beeks holds the lead by 513 votes, but there's still an estimated 9,000 votes to count. Miller Beeks claimed victory overnight, but the race has not yet been officially called. And of course, Randy Feenster, a Northwest Iowa congressman, a Republican, also re-elected at the polls on Tuesday. Lots of Siouxland school bond issues on the ballot on Tuesday, and we start with Lamar's Community Schools, where voters have said yes to a $50 million bond issue to pay for a new district-wide elementary building and improve the site. It needed 60% approval to pass. It got 61%. Voters also said yes in the Okoboji School District, passing a $69 million referendum to build a new elementary school and renovate the high school. That one was approved with 63% support. And it went the other way in Emmitsburg, Iowa. Voters there turning down a $29.75 million bond issue to rebuild the district's aging elementary school. It got 51% support, but needed 60% to pass. Voters in the Sergeant Bluff Luton School District have again rejected a school bond measure at the polls, the $54.6 million levy. It only got 55% of support, but needed 60% to pass. This is the sixth time in the past eight years voters have rejected bond issues in that school district. The support up a bit this time from around the last SBL bond vote, but still not enough. And voters in Lawton Bronson School District, they have rejected a $17 million levy for a new auditorium, gym additions, wrestling facility, and other improvements. The measure got just 47% support. It needed 60% to pass. In the Westwood School District, voters have defeated an $18.5 million bond for expansion and improvements. It needed 60% support to get the green light, just receiving 51%. It was closer in the Hinton School District, but still rejected. This bond was for $12 million for expansion and improvements. It received 57% voter support, three points short of the required 60. And in the Randolph, Nebraska School District, voters have rejected a nine and three quarters million dollar bond issue that would have financed additions and renovations. It got just over 50% support, but needed the 60% to pass. We have complete election results from Tuesday on our website, KTIV.com.